Hey, thrilled you're here. My name is Julia Souter, and I'm the executive director of the Long Duration Energy Storage Council. We're very happy to have our members presenting today to give you a lot more detail and answer your questions about electrochemical energy storage. So we'll just jump right in. As many of us have been experiencing for the last eight years, the increase in weather disasters around the world, every community has been disturbed or really kind of changed in many ways because of the climate change effects. And so many countries have now implemented net zero targets. So really demonstrate the need as we bring more renewables into our systems, how we can demonstrate that long duration energy storage provides the flexibility, the energy security, the affordability, and the reliability. And so our council's working really hard with our members, our partners to really scale the LDES diverse technologies and expand the marketplace so we can provide societal benefits. And it's really relevant to everyone is just the recent report by the UN yesterday highlighting the speed and the need for us to work together to really start addressing decreasing emissions urgently. And by doing that, we're working with all these different communities and the ecosystem. Just go back one slide, Larissa, for one second. I just wanna highlight just that every part of our industry is affected by long duration storage, whether it's transportation, buildings, whether it's agriculture, industry, there's so many elements um, and that we're working to really kind of harmonize and bring in the value of long duration energy storage. And to really kind of solidify this is just how many billions of dollars have been invested worldwide in storage, in particular long duration energy storage, just in the last few years. So not only are we seeing equity, but we're starting to see the capital stack change and bring in debt and more attributes to really kind of give the foundational components to scale up long duration energy storage. We've all seen the work around the world um, to really kind of move away from fossil fuel dependence and address energy securization and how all these different countries are working on decarbonization goals. And really, and as you saw, as I mentioned, just the need to push this even for, um, faster you know, by 2040 as identified in the UN report. And they really cannot do this without LDES. Won't go into this because you'll see our members really highlight this, but just that we can replace gas plants because we do allow for energy shifting, long duration energy storage does provide a diverse group of ancillary services that can be provided for the, the grid and distribution systems. Today, we're gonna to be focusing more on the power side, but we do, long duration energy storage does look at power, heat and hydrogen and really trying to again, show the diversification, how we can really benefit the systems of, of really reducing renewable energy curtailment. And again, de-risking the transition as we move forward to decarbonize. We offer, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the variety of ancillary services. You're going to hear more from our members about this today, about the multiple hours that we can provide of energy shifting, the multiple weeks, the months, and even the seasons of duration of both, you know, charging, discharging, and holding that storage over time, you know, when we, when we need to really use it for either emergencies or day-to-day -day operations. Just a quick background of our council. We are growing. We were launched at COP26. With our net zero power report, we produced three reports since then. We had our fourth report at COP27 on net zero heat. Uh, we have public policy recommendations and a 24 seven clean PPA toolkit. Our members are bringing a very unique perspective because we're really bringing the whole ecosystem together of technology providers, showing the diversity of long duration storage with our anchor customers, the capital providers, the equipment manufacturers and developers. So today we're gonna be talking about our members in the electrochemical field showing again the value out of the diversity within LDES. These are the four reports I mentioned. You can find them online. More than happy to, to work with you or ask any questions. And then I'm really excited to hand it over to our members to present more about their companies. So Adam at Ambry. Can you guys hear me? Yes. yes, thanks. Great. Hi. Thanks. Sorry, my Zoom on my computer not working today, so I'm on my phone. <laughs> uh, same here. So uh, we can go on to the next page. Thank you. So uh, Ambry is a battery system, uh, like most everybody else today, uh, but we are a no moving parts battery system, uh, meaning not a, not a flow battery or, or any other um, derivative like that. Uh, we are uh, designed for daily cycling of four to 24 hours. So basically your diurnal energy shifting market is what this battery is good for. 
Uh, its reasons for that are it's a strong competitor against lithium ion across that energy storage uh, duration range. So it does have a lower capex, lower operating expense, and therefore lower total cost of ownership uh, as at up to 25% below lithium ion. It does have a long life. It's a 20 year battery system with a minimal 5% degradation over that 20 year period. It's quite safe. It's passed UL's safety certifications for uh, UL 1973, that should say, and UL 9540A. And it has no thermal runaway mechanism associated with it. So it, it really is a non flammable, uh, strong behavioral, uh, robust battery system. The materials are easily recyclable. They're calcium, steel, and antimony metals. And there are recycling markets for those metals already today. And lithium ion uh, does generate 70% more greenhouse gases in the whole life cycle of mining materials, transporting them to a factory, building a battery, shipping the battery, using the battery, recycling the battery, that whole life cycle uh, for lithium ion is significantly more greenhouse gas generation. Ambry is in the process of building a pilot manufacturing facility in Massachusetts right now that will be completed later this year. And we plan to build, own and operate a gigawatt hour scale production facility in the US that's scheduled to start production in the second half of 2025. And this is what the product looks like. It is a cell, as you can see on the left, a stainless steel enclosure. Inside is a, a battery that has no moving parts. So it is a calcium on the negative and, and antimony on the positive of that battery. We stack those cells together in a tray. We uh, tower those trays together inside of a shipping container. Mm -hmm. Now this is a high temperature battery system. So inside that shipping container, we do heat it up and it has insulation on the interior walls. And at that point, the battery can be charged and discharged. Heating can be discontinued because the charging and the discharging generates heat that keeps the battery at its operating temperature. And now in a 20 foot container, we have about 1.1 megawatt hours of energy, up to 275 kilowatts of power, a strong efficiency of about 80 to 90%, depending on how it's used. And it is a uh, instantaneous power capability. So we can go from zero to full power in less than 10 milliseconds. Next page, please. And this is uh, an example of where we are deploying. So we have deployed in 2022, a data center pilot for Microsoft. It was a 20 foot container. And the point or the purpose of this for data centers is to eliminate diesel generators and to create 24 seven renewable power for data centers. In 24, we'll be launching a series of utility pilots. So we have utility customers in the US, Australia, Europe, and India who have all signed agreements to, uh, to host these systems for evaluation. So XL Energy here in the US is one of those utilities, Reliance in India is another, those who've been publicly announced. And then lastly, uh, we have announced uh, commercial projects in 2025. Specifically, we have a 300 megawatt, 1.2 gigawatt hour project in South Africa, which is paired with a wind generator, occupies an efficient amount of space of about seven acres or three hectares, and is with a company called Earth and Wire. So that's uh, a quick overview of Ambry's technology and where we are in, the, in our uh, deployment roadmap and look forward to any questions. Thanks. Thank you, Adam. And over to Alex. Nice to Nishant. Good morning, guys. Sorry, I thought we were going to go through Q and A. Um, so, can we move to the next slide? Hi, I'm Nishant Sharma. I'm the, uh, the vice president for uh, North America with Cellcube. And um, I'm sorry. So, Cellcube is a Vanadium Redox Low Battery Company out of Austria, and we're one of the oldest, um, you know, flow batteries uh, companies in the world. Uh, we've been operating since the last 23 years, um, and uh, we've done uh, quite a few number of projects, uh, total about 140, uh, focusing on long duration storage uh, applications. Uh, deployed about 14 megawatts and 70 75 megawatt hours. Um, just going to go to the next slide. 
So like, like I mentioned, the, the company, you know, is like over 20 years old and it started off as a spinoff, uh, is that a, you know, from an R&D uh, company and university. And we've gone through like several iterations, um, you know, of tweaking our technology and kind of making it work. Um, um, we actually have one of the uh, oldest operating system that's still operational since 2012. Um, and um, and right currently we're in our fourth generation um, uh, platform and uh, quickly expediting our next gen product, you know, with higher energy and power densities. Um, next slide. So if you look at our uh, um, project deployments, um, you know, we've done, you know, projects pretty much, you know, in, in cold environments and hot environments, uh, you know, trying to validate a lot of the functionality of the battery technology. Um, here in North America, you know, we've deployed about 12 megawatt hours commercially behind the meter. Um, we've got one project in, um, in, uh, in Illinois and then another one in California. Um, and we're working towards others, but primarily, you know, the use cases are resiliency, um, you know, frequency regulation, peak power reduction, um, and also renewable curtailment, um, you know, for energy arbitrage. Uh, and our largest project was in Australia, which is a four megawatt, 16 megawatt hour uh, battery storage. So vanadium redox flow battery technology is actually um, uh, quite old. It was, it came, it came out of, um, Australia in 1985, uh, but flow battery technology was invented by, by NASA back in the 1970s. Um, so the way that the technology works is like, if you look at the, uh, if you look at the diagram, uh, you know, the electrolyte is actually stored in the tanks, um, you know, which is a vanadium salt, vanadium based electrolyte. Um, and then we use pumps to pump the electrolyte into those membranes uh, that you see in the, the, uh, the middle. And um, you know the the battery cell actually goes through a reversible oxidation process um, that actually uh, you know generates the flow of electrons and generates electricity. Um, you know from a performance standpoint, you know um, you know it, it, you know it's a it's a very safe technology. Like half of the um, you know the battery is is made of electrolytes, um, which is the energy portion of the the system. Um, you know it, it offers much longer um, you know, duration life cycle, like, uh, you know, 20 to 25 years. Um, as I mentioned, we actually have a project that's operational since the last 12 years in a, in a, in a fourth generation uh, application. So, so you can see that, um, you know, the long durability, the, the life cycle is actually quite proven, um, you know, compared to lithium ion and some of the other technologies that are out there. Um, and then, uh, can you go to the next slide? So this is kind of like what our value proposition is in a nutshell. Um, and, uh, you know, when you, when you think about vanadium redox flow batteries, there are quite a few companies out there, um, you know, but we've done uh, quite a few number of demonstration projects. Like I said, pretty much if you name an application, we've done it. Um, and we've done over 140 projects, over 75 megawatt hours deployed. Um, you know, we offer 20,000 cycles, you know, 20 year uh, asset life, 20 to 25 years. Um, and uh, several of our batteries are in second or third generation applications, um, you know, which means that the uh, technology and the product can be reused, uh, you know, even after it's been decommissioned. Um, we also offer 200% power overrating. So the, the power and the energy ratios, um, you know, in a flow battery, you know, compared to lithium ion, uh, you know, they're very decoupled. So you can actually, uh, you know, size the, the power and energy with a lot of flexibility. But the uh, with the two hundred percent power over rating, we can actually derate or overrate the um, um, the the battery and, and get additional power capability in you know if required. Uh, so it makes it flexible for both energy and power applications. Um, some of the other features, you know, it's a safe, non-flammable chemistry. The electrolyte is water-based, um, and um, you know, you know, we're a, you know, we offer 20 hour assets, uh, 20, 25 years, um, you know, for, with a long cycle life guarantee. Uh, next slide. So our, our basic building block starts with four hour systems. Um, you know, so we could do four hours, eight hours, 10, 12, you name it. Um, the, uh, the, the energy uh, rating of the battery system is dictated by the electrolyte. 
um, you know, which you see at the bottom containers, and the uh, the power capability of the uh, the cell cube, you know, comes from the power stacks, um, you know, which is the the top container. Uh, so the more uh, uh, the, the the more energy you need, the more electrolyte tanks you need. So uh, uh, so that's kind of how the, you know the the scaling of the system works. Um, next slide. And uh, so when it comes to you know sustainability and uh, you know uh, you know end of life uh, recycling, eighty five percent of the battery is completely recyclable. Um, you know that includes electrolyte that can be reused. Um, you know vanadium, which is actually a byproduct in the mining process in the steel industry. Um, you know we don't use any rare earth metals like cobalt, manganese, uh, any of that stuff, um, and it's environmentally pretty safe. Um, and, uh, um, and, and the battery system is actually capable of uh, multiple uh, uses and uh, life cycles throughout 20, 25 years. So that's it from my side. Uh, we'll ha be happy to answer any other questions. All right, thank you. Now uh, we move on to Ezink. Hello. Hi, this, uh, this is Vikram Bhatia here. I'm the Chief of Staff here at Easing. Thank you very much for having me here today. Uh, so I'm here to present Easing's uh, long duration energy storage technology. Uh, so Easing uh, is a company which has created a breakthrough uh, electric electrochemical cell technology, uh, which actually physically stores energy in physically free zinc metal. So what actually happens on the left-hand side that you can see is that flows into the top of our cell uh, with our, through, through our graphite charge cathodes. Uh, it moves into the liquid electrolyte in the middle of the cell where energy is, is stored, uh, and then flows out through the bottom of that cell uh, and in, in our discharging section through an air cathode. When energy actually flows into the cell, uh, a, a chemical reaction occurs, which causes zinc to precipitate out of that electrolyte as physically free zinc. Uh, the reverse reaction when, when air is entered through the cell in the discharging section uh, is what physically creates a reduction oxidation reaction uh, and free electrons are created, and that makes that energy flow out of the bottom of the cell uh, to the load. Uh, E-Zinc uh, has, has been working on this technology for the better part of 10 years uh, and has uh, made significant progress over the last uh, couple of years in particular. Uh, we're at about 75 plus staff now and seven patent families covering uh, our overall solution, uh, the, air, the air cathode, uh, as well as several, several of, of the components in our cell technology. Uh, this technology itself has has many uh, several key differentiators to it. Uh, the, the the two that are the most uh, relevant here is that Easing has both a flexible and scalable solution, as well as one that is modular. Uh, what happens is that these cells that you saw here on the left hand side are deployed in they're they're in about like one meter by thirty centimeter by, by thirty centimeter uh, cells, uh, and these are actually stacked within a shipping container, um, in which we can have one twenty foot shipping container or three or five or ten. Uh, at, at durations that are, you know, as low as 12 hours up to 24 and 48 and beyond that. Uh, and these are now stackable and flexible to create modular solutions. Uh, in addition, our technology has a long lifetime. The, the zinc retains 100% of its energy capacity throughout its lifetime, a large operating temperature, no risk of thermal runway, uh, and all the materials are, are fully recyclable at end of life, uh, either in different cells or refurbished uh, as part of uh, a, new, a new product technology. Uh, next slide, please. So what Easing has accomplished so far, uh, in 2022, we actually deployed our first, uh, our first pilot deployment uh, at, at the Fairmore Compressed Natural Gas Facility in Woodstock, Ontario. This was a one kilowatt, uh, 25 kilowatt hours, so 24 hour duration resiliency use case that was connected to a 10 kilowatt solar connection and the grid as well. Um, this was mainly to validate our technical performance in the field. Uh, moving into 2023 and 2024, we're deploying a nameplate 10 kilowatt, uh, 250 kilowatt hour system. So that's again about a 24 hour duration, uh, again for resiliency and power safety uh, and public safety power shutoffs uh, use cases uh, with uh, Toyota Shusho uh, in Texas and California Energy Commission in California. Uh, moving on from that, we're going to be deploying at uh, in 500 kilowatt uh, deployments in 2025 when we intend to go commercial. Uh, and then 2026 and beyond when we intend to have that grid scale level of one megawatt plus uh, 24, 48, 100 uh, hour duration uh, types of, of, of installations. Uh, so thanks very much for all for listening. Uh, again, Bikram Bhatti here. Uh, I'm looking forward to any questions you may have. 
Thank you. And um, again, we'll address uh, questions at the end and some of our panelists may respond in the chat directly if there's questions specifically to their companies. And now we're moving on to Intervenue. All right. Thank you. Let me get my, uh, turn my camera on here. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. My name is Brad Murray. I'm the Senior Director of Marketing with Intervenue, and I get to talk to you about our nickel hydrogen technology. Now, the core chemistry uh, was uh, built by NASA uh, in the 1980s. It was successfully deployed in a number of high-profile applications, uh, including the International Space Station, uh, the, the Hubble Space Telescope. And that's kind of where designed for a number of years was, was in aerospace. Then in 2017, Stanford University, led by one of the preeminent material scientists on the planet, Dr. Yi Shui, reevaluated the chemistry. And after pulling out the expensive part, the platinum, out of that design, what he found in substituting a metal alloy was that not only could he improve the performance of that original NASA design, but he could do so with a uh, line of sight to a cost profile that uh, beat lithium ion in the long run. And so with that, Intervenue was spun out and uh, was spun out to commercialize the technology. In 2022, we deployed our successful, uh, we successfully deployed our first generation DC block solution called the Inter Interstation. Today, we are manufacturing our second generation energy storage vessel, which provides greater design and integration flexibility. Now, how it works is we basically take stacks of our anode sheets and cathode sheets. We compress those and, and uh, we divide them with a separator. Those are placed in that, that uh, tube. They're pressurized, hermetically sealed. Uh, and then during the charge cycle, the water electrolyte is split into oxygen and hydrogen. And during discharge, the hydrogen recombines to form into water. And this results in an extremely stable and reliable um, uh, reaction that just doesn't have the same sort of degradation that you see in, in other uh, types of chemistries, uh, particularly battery chemistries like lithium ion. Next slide, please. And, in, and with the rollout of our solution, we really took a look at the traditional energy storage challenges, uh, namely those posed by lithium ion with that fire and explosion risk. And with the Intervenue solution, there's no risk of thermal runaway. Uh, there's no uh, risk of fire propagation. Uh, if you could hit next. Uh, we really uh, have redefined how uh, utilities and asset owners think about OPEX and think about their operating and maintenance expenses. There's no augmentation required. Uh, so instead of augmenting the, the battery five or seven years uh, and, and entering into that risk and cost, uh, the long lifespan of this solution um, uh, provides additional value there. There's essentially no routine maintenance. Uh, it addresses the need for longer duration and dispatch. So we have flexible charge and discharge ranges from C2 to C10. Uh, even up to C12. And we uh, have a 30 year lifespan with 30,000 cycles cycling three times per day. And even at the end of that life cycle, you're still talking about a battery uh, that retains 85% of its capacity. So there's a potential for a second life there. We have uh, excellent overcharge, deep charge and discharge uh, characteristics. So we don't have those same uh, tight tolerances and restrictions on overcharging and discharge that you see with, with today's solutions. And the technology uh, can be applied in, in virtually any type of climate. It's capable of negative 40 to plus 50 ambient. We see efficiencies in the high 80s. So it really provides a lot of flexibility. And in fact, we see that with our, a lot of our customers in the Caribbean where you have aggressive uh, temperatures and you have difficult servicing requirements. Uh, you know, Our solutions really fit in a lot of those situations. We're non-flammable, non-toxic. Uh, There's no lithium. Our components and our, our materials are, sort, are easily sourced from any continent on Earth. And instead of having uh, you know, those, those significantly high chemistry adoption and technology risks, even though Intervenue is a young company, you have to remember that the technology has already been proven in 30 years of aerospace applications. So we're essentially taking a, a, a very proven technology and uh, applying it to, to applications uh, here on Earth. And then when you talk about those applications, you know, we're, we're Today, we're focused traditionally on the, the grid scale and the commercial markets, uh, whether that's renewable energy integration, um, whether it's um, uh, solar smoothing or, or, or improving the wind variability. We do see applications on the residential side, um, including uh, resiliency and, and virtual power plants as well. Slide, please. 
Uh, today, we're deployed all across the, the country. We have deployments in the west, the south, the east. Uh, we've got more than seven gigawatt hours of customer commitments in the near term. Uh, these include both test sites and uh, customer locations. And we're uh, you know, aggressively uh, rolling out um, our, our production plans. We've got customers in particularly in the Caribbean and in Europe and Asia. Uh, so we expect to see um, you know, significant deployments here with commercial applications in 2023 and into 2024. Next slide. Now, if you'd like to find out more about uh, our company or our solution, I encourage you to visit uh, entervenue.com. You can also uh, follow us on LinkedIn or contact any one of the, the, the folks here on this slide, and we'll be happy to get into a, a detailed discussion with you. All right, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thanks, Brad. All right, next up we have EOS. All right, hi, uh, thank you. This is uh, Andy Mazur with EOS. Excited to present uh, on a four minute speed date here. Um, so we are a, uh, a battery manufacturer that has a, um, a zinc aqueous solution static sealed battery. We were, were a 15-year-old company. First 10 years was really R&D and refining the, uh, the, the, the aqueous solution in our manufacturing. In the last few years, we've been up in manufacturing and rolling. So uh, like it says here, we've got about 300 team members. Probably two-thirds of those are actually in manufacturing. So building batteries every day out of our Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, office and we're using 85 plus percent all U.S. source product. So we are a domestic ITC uh, recipient. So it's been great. That was a nice little surprise in the R IRA since we were much older than that. But um, we're fully patented, fully made in the United States. And, uh, you know, we have a great long lifespan. Um, next slide, please. We'll just show you the, uh, the how we configure the batteries here. Um, so the one battery module there is a sealed, essentially plastic tub with 20 cells in it that contain the uh, the aqueous solution, which is somewhat, but you know, we have a lot of patents around that. That sealed battery goes into an energy cube, and then we do all the wiring in parallel series, and then those energy cubes are put together into uh, roughly a 40-foot container type configuration, which is about two and a half megawatt hours. And those are all, all the um, wiring comes into a marshalling box. So the installers and our, and our contractors, it's very easy for them to then attach the DC converters and the PCS and things like that. Um, next slide, please. And I'm just ripping through this as we should. So, um, uh, so uh, commercially, we have just under a gigawatt hour out in the field. It might be a gigawatt hour today, our, our largest project in South Carolina, which was a 20 megawatt, 80 megawatt hour system was just uh, got permission to operate or getting permission to operate this week. So that's going to be cycling 100 megawatt hours a day. So that in the field number will go up. But um, we've got a, a ton of customers out there um, globally, the majority of the products in the U.S., but we certainly have a lot globally and uh, gr great significant customers that are starting to really validate the product. Now we have a Black & Veatch bankability study behind it. We have a boundless study on our greenhouse gas emissions, which is, you know, 75% less than lithium. And so we are we are ready to be deployed and, and, and manufacturing every day right now um, in, in Pittsburgh. Um, just, to, just to summarize here really on the, on the next slide, um, a lot of our value proposition, we have very minimal degradation. So we can offer a product that does not need to be augmented at all. We can get you the full capacity of a 20 year lifespan of the system operating in one cycle a day, wide temperature range, you know, minus 20 to plus 50 at 35 degrees Celsius. We have little bathroom fans that kick on and blow a little air through it, but that's about it. We have de minimis auxiliary power. Um, we have zero fire suppression needed. We have zero HVAC systems needed. We have good operating. Uh, I guess that was the cute little stop. <laughs> we have good operating conditions, you know, four to plus hours. You know, we see a lot of six, eight, 10 hour systems going out. out. Um, our depth of discharge, obviously, as it says here, zero to 100 percent. As soon as you charge it, you can start to discharge. It doesn't need to wait or anything like that. Um, we're fully UL certified and everything are, is recyclable with standard recycling practices today. So we are actively manufacturing in the United States and deploying product every day. And we're ready to have conversations about customers who need some uh, long duration uh, storage products made in the U.S. and 40% ITC. And so 
Certainly take some questions, but that's my that's my speed date. It says I have one second left. Oh, no, I don't. Nope. <laughs> you know, that was an accident. I didn't mean to advance it then. No, I was kidding. It's fine. <laughs> all right. Thank you. And thanks all for submitting your questions. We'll uh, get to questions at the end. Next, we have ESS. Thanks, Larissa. And uh, thanks, Julia and Suman for organizing uh, today's webinar. Uh, I'm happy to spend some time with you today. So if we could go to uh, the first slide, please. Thought maybe I'd just talk briefly about you know who we are and and why we're here. So ESS has been around since uh, 2011. A good bit of that time was spent in the R and D space, and uh, we achieved full commercialization around 2017, and then we went public in the fourth quarter of 2021. Uh, we're an aqueous iron flow battery. And we're a mature second generation technology that really offers unmatched cost and sustainability with a performance guaranteed through an independent insurer, Munich Re, uh, to help our customers uh, get over some of the bankability concerns with the newer technology. So while conventional battery chemistries with limited cycle life deliver a seven to 10 year life cycle before requiring costly augmentation, our all iron flow battery chemistry delivers 20 plus years with no capacity fade or degradation. So how do they work? Iron flow batteries basically circulate liquid electrolytes to charge and discharge the electrons by a process that's called a redox reaction. And the word redox is basically a contraction of the words reduction, which represents a gain of electrons and oxidation or a loss of electrons. So we use the same electrolyte which is fueled principally by food grade and earth abundant iron, salt, and water on both the negative and positive sides of the equation, so to speak. So that really eliminates cross-contamination and degradation uh, that earlier flow batteries experienced. And that's also why ESS chemistry remains stable for an unlimited number of deep cycle charges and discharge cycles. So our patented electrode design and control system, coupled with our really simple electrochemistry, allows us to operate longer at deeper discharge levels. And unlike typical batteries that are packaged as fixed cells or modules, our flow battery has more energy storage capacity, which gives our customers the flexibility to align both the power and the output and energy storage capacity precisely uh, to a project's requirements. We're a safe battery. We're completely non-toxic. Uh, we reduce the need for fire suppression equipment, secondary containment, or hazmat precautions. In fact, our iron flow chemistry has a, a pH similar to soda or wine uh, and contains no toxic materials. Uh, additionally, our battery is substantially recyclable at the end of life. So as I mentioned, our technology decouples power or the rate of electricity flow from capacity. So this provides flexibility to use the battery for a variety of use cases simultaneously. Our customers can maximize renewable generation, manage duct curves without peaker plants, meet EV charging peaks, and reduce system bottlenecks. Later this year, we'll be launching the ESS Energy Center. And that's really gonna be our grid scale long duration battery that delivers uh, 10 to 12 hours of capacity. And it's really ideally suited to help utilities, particularly in the United States, shift intermittent renewables to basically store excess production when available and ship that energy, energy to when it's needed most. If we go to the next slide, please. So now that we've gone over the technology, I'd like to talk a bit about some partnerships and projects. Just to give you an example of, of where we fit in the ecosystem and where we see our growth, last September, we announced a landmark agreement to provide up to 200 megawatts and two gigawatt hours of our batteries uh, to the Sacramento Municipal Utility District. That's the nation's sixth largest community-owned not-for-profit not electric service provider. Our partnership with SMUD is really unique in that we're going to be delivering a mix of our commercially available energy warehouse platform and the energy center, long duration energy storage solutions. And those batteries are gonna be integrated with the SMUD electric grid beginning this year. And SMUD will be deploying ESS systems in support of their 2030 zero carbon plan, 
which is quite aggressive and aims to reduce thermal generation, maximize local solar generation, and provide neighborhood resiliency. As part of this multi-year agreement, we also intend to set up facilities for battery system assembly, operations and maintenance support, and project delivery in SMUDS territory. This commitment is gonna create local high paying jobs. In addition, we plan to establish a center of excellence to expand the workforce and knowledge base for LDES technology in partnership with higher education institutions. We go to the next slide, please. To talk a little bit about a, a different sort of use case that's pretty novel and unique and, and one that we just find really fun. Uh, in January, we announced a project with Amsterdam Schiphol Airport the second largest airport in mainland Europe. They will be deploying an energy warehouse to be used in a pilot to enable the retirement of polluting diesel gensets in the future as part of Shiphol's ambitious sustainability plan. Shiphol also uh, has a zero waste and emission-free airport commitment by 2030. So essentially our battery will be recharging something known as an electric ground power unit or an EGPU. EGPUs are batteries which will replace the diesel ground power units currently used to supply electrical power to airplanes when they're parked at the airport. Our solution was specifically selected because of its superior environmental and safety performance. It's basically a safe, non-toxic, uh, no fire risk solution uh, and very much in line with the uh net zero commitments. And then finally, I didn't have time to include this slide, uh, but yesterday we announced a certification of our battery modules, our S200 battery modules, uh, which is a core component of our systems. Uh, they achieved the UL 1973 standard. And this is an industry standard for stationary storage, which confirms ESS's quality, resilience, and ability to operate safely and effectively in a variety of conditions. So I'll end there and thank you all for your time. And uh, for additional information on ESS, please visit us, www.essinc.com. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll move on to Forum Energy. Hello everybody, this is Marco. I'm a co-founder of Forum Energy and I did software and analytics. Um, it's a pleasure to be uh, on this call. So Formage is developing an iron air battery that is really based on the simple principle of rusting and unrusting, rusting, reduce and reducing iron. Um, essentially, imagine you start from a metallic state um, and you uh, enable oxygen reactions um, at the iron surface, you oxidize the iron, extract electrons, that becomes the discharging part of the process. And then uh, you, you can invert that actually, and that's uh, where a lot of our intellectual property has gone, the process bringing back the iron to the metallic state upon charging. Uh, because of the fundamental low cost entitlement of the electrochemistry, essentially you're dealing with iron, oxygen and an aqueous electrolyte, there is a very, very low cost entitlement, um, which means that the battery can be built in very extended durations. And that's why we define a, a multi-day storage solution. Our first product targets 100 hours of discharge um, capacity. Um, it's inherently safe because of the safety of the materials, uh, 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 recyclable, and also entitled to scale because of the massive scale of the input supply chains. About the same time, we can move to the next slide. About the same time as we started developing the technology, we invested heavily in software um, because we understood the need to better model decarbonization and um, understand the really product requirements and how our collective technologies, quite frankly, long duration, uh, storage and flexibility solutions fit into future decarbonization plans. Um, and we identified the shortcomings uh, of traditional grid planning tools. Um, so this is a set of capabilities that we developed, of course, in the interest of form energy and developing our multi-day storage product. There is also a set of capabilities that we're trying to champion for the industry at large. So please feel free to get in touch and join the, the revolution here. 
Um, let's move to the next slide. In terms of where we are as a company, uh, over 400 employees, several locations in the United States. Um, we just announced our uh, large scale manufacturing uh, site in Wharton, West Virginia, uh, which uh, in its first phase will be rated at 500 megawatts, 50 gigawatt hour a year. Um, and uh, we have announced already a number of projects uh, with some of the largest vertical integrated utilities in the country, uh, more projects coming soon nationally and internationally uh, for several gigawatt hours of capacity to be deployed through um, the first uh, the first phase through 2026. Um, that's pretty much it. I look forward to your questions. All right, thank you so much. And now we are moving to Infinity. Hi, everybody. My name is Matt Walls. I'm the Vice President of Business Development at Infinity Energy Systems. Uh, we make a vanadium flow battery. So I will not dive into the technology since I think uh, Nishant at CellCubes did a good job outlining the core technology behind the vanadium flow battery. So let me tell, uh, provide a little overview of the company, where we stand today. Uh, we, we have a relatively high maturity in terms of our product manufacturing integration. In the upper left, you can see sort of the, I'll call it our readiness scores relative to what uh, the Department of Energy uh, uh, rates and assess uh, technologies and, and companies. And we see ourselves being fully mature in 2025 uh, with our uh, uh, evolution of our product and our next gen product being out in the market. Um, in terms of our roadmap, you know, in 2020, 2018, in our prior generation product, we focused on optimizing a factory built vanadium flow battery module. Uh, today, our VS3 plat, uh, product is out in the market and operating that we optimize at a shipping container level with six modules within it. Uh, that is sort of the evolution of us uh, making uh, uh, improvements in the, in the technology and our, and our performance. And our next gen product, which will be out in the, called Mistral, will be out in the market in 2025. That will optimize at an array level with about at you know 48 units uh, shipping containers all in one sort of optimized design and layout, and uh, we see the performance improvements, the cost improvements, uh, and the uh, O and M and maintenance improvements that uh, would tie into our next gen product and a roadmap really driving us towards. Uh, meeting and beating the uh, DOE's objectives for uh, long LCOS of five cents or less by 2030. Uh, we're not doing it alone. We have uh, some key strategic partners. So Siemens Gamesa is our technology partner on our next gen product. They're focused on the power electronics while we're design we're focused on the cell, the overall design and the cell stacks that that will be in that next gen product. And then for our U.S. manufacturing uh, uh, partnership, we have a partnership with U.S. Vanadium. So our goal is by 2025 to have U.S. domestic content threshold achieved and out in the market for uh, customers to monetize the additional uh, tax credit bonuses that are uh, available in the United States. Um, so let me move on to, you know, I think the, the easiest way to talk about our applications and use cases is to talk about real projects. Uh, and... So upper left corner is a um, fire station in California. We're providing a 10 hour resiliency to that fire station. It's a critical infrastructure. Uh, it's an emergency center for that community. Uh, that's a, a, a project that's small and, and behind the meter application. There's a solar on site that's a grid uh, connected into a microgrid. Uh, bottom left is Energy Marine, uh, European Marine Center. This is a, a combination project that has uh, tidal power generation that flows into our batteries, that stores it, and then delivers it in a steady output into electrolyzers to produce green hydrogen in a test use case in, uh, in Scotland. Uh, upper right is a small solar plus storage application at a water uh, treatment facility that's uh, offsetting demand uh, for that customer. Uh, and then the bottom right is one of our uh, more recent larger projects, a five megawatt hour system. Uh, that is behind a substation, co-located with lithium, and they are co-dispatched, they're dispatched together to optimize uh, sort of the, the performance and uh, capabilities of the two capabilities. And so 
our flow battery sits on sort of, I'll call it on top, and is cycling at a, at a much heavier rate on a day-to-day -day basis while the lithium charges and discharges in its sort of you know daily, once a day cycle type use case. So next slide. Uh, and then sort of looking ahead. So those, you know, sort of what are we, what are our key projects right now? We're sort of moving up into the sort of 10 megawatt hour systems. Uh, we have two solar plus storage projects that are coming online uh, right now. One is in Canada, one is in Australia. Both are sort of meant to firm up renewables and create some dispatchability and create more value in a market that uh, where the solar by itself isn't, uh, um, isn't going to have as big of an impact as solar plus storage. And then we're part of a microgrid in California at a, a tribal resort. And um, uh, th th those are, I think, some good use cases for our capabilities. To round it out, I think you know the you know a lot of people have touched on similar capabilities uh, that we have, which is uh, unlimited cycling, full depth of discharge, a flexible dispatchability. So our design is really focused on fast charging and a wide range to discharge. So typically, you can you know a two, typical use case for us is charge in six and discharge anywhere from four to eighteen or more hours of duration, focused on optimizing. The daily pulse of the energy markets and uh, and the optimizing the day to day use cases in in the market. Thank you. Thank you. And um, our last presenter today is Redflow. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Higgins from Redflow. It's great being here today. Um, so a lot of similarities between Redflow's technology and um, some of the others that you've heard from today. We are a zinc bromine uh, chemistry and a, and a leader in uh, global deployments. Uh, we have more than 250 active commercial deployments worldwide. We have what, what's called a hybrid um, flow battery, which means that we actually build modules where um, that are kind of a standardized size um, this is where our approach is a little different from a lot of the other uh, folks that we've heard from today. We've got a very standardized, um, small form factor module that's really a building block of everything that we do. It's kind of like our, our Lego block that we can build into you know, anything from remote grid systems. We've done a lot of telco towers historically to all the way through to multi megawatt hour scale um, you know, systems in uh, behind the meter and front of meter applications. Our uh, solution, very similar to others, are ideal for daily cycling type applications, um, kind of a, in its standard operating um, methodology, we, we kind of say it's a good three to 12 hour uh, solution, but we are actually working on a lot of different uh, um, uh, projects where we need to extend that well beyond that. And, and we can accomplish that through uh, a unique feature that we have called hibernation mode. Hibernation mode allows us to basically um, my non-technical way of describing it is we, we pickle the electrolyte and um, allow it to um, basically um, shut down the entire uh, battery system so that we can then um, uh, keep it with at 100% state of charge and release it at some point in the future. Now, we can release that um, later in the day. Um, or we can release it uh, days, weeks, months later if you're if you're looking at a resiliency application. This is a pretty unique feature in that it allows us to maintain that really high round trip efficiency that we have um, consistent for a very long duration system, while also being able to maintain that that quick response time that we would have um, that's that's comparable to a lithium uh, system, uh, and, and we can accomplish that through staggering discharge of batteries over time. Um, similar to others, we've got, nope, I wasn't quite done with that one yet. <laughs> Thank you. We have, uh, you know, very low cost, um, you know, cost competitive with lithium solution, long life, uh, multi-cycle design. Um, we can do the same kind of value stacking things that you can do with other uh, batteries. Um, we've got a very safe solution, no risk of thermal runaway. Um, we've got a very recyclable system, uh, system with uh, reusable components. Um, the electrolyte itself is also reusable. Um, and, you know, we've been deploying projects now for about 12 years globally. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned before, we've got three, uh, 250 plus active deployments, 3.2 gigawatt hours of energy throughput, more than 2 million operating hours on our batteries. Um, and we have our own company owned manufacturing plant uh, that's been in operation since 2018. Next slide, please. This is just to give you kind of a, a perspective on where we've deployed projects over time. So we're actually on five continents around the world. Uh, we've done work here in North America, we've deployed projects in Australia, New Zealand, our, our home markets. Um, we've done quite a bit in Sub-Saharan Africa, 
projects throughout Europe, Middle East, um, South and Southeast Asia. Um, so we've, we've got batteries deployed in kind of a, a broad spectrum, operating environments, um, everything from remote telco towers in the outback of Australia to, um, to you know, humid uh, tropical environments to, um, um, you know, just lots of different environments that we've been deployed in. Uh, next slide, please. Wanted to give you an example of one of our deployments here in North America. This is a two megawatt hour installation that we commissioned about 15 months ago at a bioenergy in Southern California. This was a California Energy Commission uh, project that is designed to provide this bioenergy plant with a source of resiliency. It is the, the critical infrastructure here in California. Um, we were able to go from uh, initial contract commissioning for the CEC within a 10 month time frame. We constructed this project entirely during COVID. We had all sorts of marine freight disruptions that we were dealing with, and yet we still managed to get this project online quickly and on budget for the CEC. Um, and it's been operating now for about 15 months, as I mentioned, satisfying all the customers' needs. Um, they're, they've been a great uh, site host for us, a great reference for us, um, as other people have uh, been interested in, in um, our technology. We, we, you know, we've got a great customer that just loves what we've done there. Um, the system itself is kind of designed on the, the framework technology that we're, or the framework form factor that we're using for larger systems today, which is an energy pod form factor that um, basically takes um, those individual modules, puts them into an enclosure. Uh, we've got a typical enclosure that we're using now as a 20 battery enclosure that's about the size of half of a shipping container. Um, we can ship those basically ready to be installed on site. Um, and, uh, and that's a way that we scale up to, you know, multi dozen, multi, even multi hundred megawatt hour, um, in terms of our form factor. Next slide, please. So just my contact information. I'd love to hear from everybody, uh, out there, you know, a lot of advantages of zinc bromine as a chemistry, both versus lithium and, um, versus, uh, you know, some of the other, uh, non-lithium chemistries, obviously everything that, uh, that you've heard today, though, there's um, a lot of really great work going on here uh, um, amongst the industry. And we hope to have that dialogue with uh, all of you on, uh, on opportunities to, to work with you on projects. Thanks, Mark and everyone. I'll hand over to Lursa, noticing that we don't have much time left, um, but we will send the slides out to everyone so the contact information is there to reach out for more questions. Lursa. Sure, thank you to all of our presenters. Um, had a few questions come in uh, on one of them on kind of recycling or end of life. Uh, if anyone wants to pick up on that, since many of your batteries can you know work 20 plus years, uh, there were some questions around how that worked as well. Well, I, I could speak for EOS on our end of life. We are, um, we, we are, there's standard recycling available today that all of our components can go into for end of life. So there's no special recycling. We're not we're not waiting for something to happen or anything like that. So currently today, it's totally recyclable in standard practices. And I think I heard that from a lot of the people on the call, quite frankly. So um, and then also, you know, are, are there any kind of thoughts you have on, you know, supply chain as we have a lot of different technologies here. And we know there's various supply chain issues between, you know, all kind of clean energy resources. Are there any uh, specific thoughts that any of you have on that? I mean, just to, to echo what, what earlier presenters uh, emphasized, you know, ESS as well has a predominantly, you know, 80% plus domestic supply chain, uh, which has mitigated uh, some of the issues that some of our competitors that, that require rare earth minerals and materials have faced. Um, I note that EOS also pointed out that, you know, the domestic content adder, uh, that's definitely a driver domestically. And we certainly intend to continue to make sure that our domestic content well exceeds the statutory minimums uh, of the IRA. Yeah, this is Matt Walls with uh, Infinity. I would just say, uh, I think the Inflation Reduction Act was uh, groundbreaking to uh, drive technology to, to uh, and production in the United States. And um, 
I, it's not surprising to hear a lot of people's plans to to uh, to uh, bring that to fruition for their for their for their companies and. Uh, you know, the, the, the incentives are quite compelling for the project owner. And so from a customer perspective, I think it's just, it's going to be table stakes. You're going to have to deliver it. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if everybody's going to get there in short order if they're not. Um, and then I think the, you know, the, the other part is the advanced, there's new tax credits for advanced manufacturing, product, uh, advanced manufacturing that will help drive new innovation uh, and I think what's also great about this, probably this group more so, is that there's a lot of IP that's in the U.S. and uh, and friendly countries that um, bodes well for national security around supply chains and uh, and growth in this in these industries. So the uh, uh, one other thing I'd like to add is that you know, so a lot of these technologies, you know, whether it's us, you know, with vanadium uh, blow redox. Uh, I mean, these technologies are bulky and heavy. And um, so, you know, even from a logistical standpoint, um, you know, it makes sense to have, you know, manufacturing supply chain in the U.S. You know, otherwise, you know, given the way the logistics costs are, uh, you know, it can become a competitive disadvantage. Um, so, you know, coupled with the, you know, the IRA incentives, you know, with local manufacturing, I, I think you'll see a lot of insourcing here in the U.S. in the next five years. Thank you. Um, and we're just about, we're just out of time here. I know we started a couple minutes late to get folks in the door. Um, so one last question, and, and anyone can respond to this, or everyone is, um, what would you say? You know, your kind of last last thirty second thoughts are on on Eldes and you know the opportunity for the market growth and and leading the way with with your electrochemical technologies. I'll just say, generally speaking, it's it's an indisputable fact that. You know, new solar plus storage is more cost effective today than new natural gas, certainly coal. So the challenge becomes how do you extend the sun to truly make solar baseload? And, and that's where uh, a host of technologies come in. Uh, certainly, we believe there's a compelling place for us in that ecosystem uh, to truly achieve baseload renewables. Yeah, I'm just a firm believer you need storage to sort of connect the dots. It's sort of unlock carbon, truly net zero world. It's, you got to connect the dots between wind and solar and, and demand for energy and storage uh, is going to play a major role. And that is going to include longer duration, but it's also going to include multiple technologies that have a complementary capabilities that will um, together create a more optimal solution for each of the marketplaces that need to uh, attain net zero goals. All right. Well, thank you all for joining and thank you to all of our presenters today. As noted, we'll be sending out the recording and the slides to all of our registrants and we appreciate your time in joining today's webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.